Hello everyone. So now our character can interact with stuff, but we need to actually tell him what he's interacting with. So we're going to set up the the foundation of all our item information. So the next couple episodes probably going to be kind of boring, a lot of data driven stuff, but it'll lay the groundwork for all the cool stuff that we're going to get to later on. So in my third person, in my blueprints, uh, in my interaction folder, I'm going to right click and create a new folder and this is going to be the item data. Double click open that up and we're going to need to create some lists and then a structure. So we'll go to blueprint. For lists we'll use an enumeration. This will be our E underscore item ID. This will be the list of all the items in our game. Double click and open that up and for right now we're just going to add one. And this is just blank. So basically what, what to do if there's nothing in that slot at all. Then we'll right click and we're going to create one more. Enum E underscore item type. And this will be the different types of items that we have. Let me look at my notes over here. So we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to have items that will restore health. Items that will restore stamina. We'll have weapons to swing. Or just weapon. We'll have tools to swing. Let's see, seeds to plant. Props to place. Or prop. So like fence posts, scarecrows, whatever we decide to add in that's decorative items to place around the world. Uh crafting regent so things like wood stone anything that would be used to craft something else so like when we get to the point of having veggies and um, eggs and stuff we'll be able to use that to make omelets or what have you and then number seven is food so this will have different effects like it can boost your health by a certain amount or what have you then we need an info struct. So right under that blueprint again, at the very bottom you'll see structure. This is an arrangement of variables, and this will be s underscore item info. It's a good way of communicating information across while also keeping nodes tidy. And let's see for this one, we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, twelve. So we'll add twelve variables. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now you really want to plan out structures before you use them. That's why it's taken me a couple days to get to this video. I wanted to make sure that I had time to kind of go over and double check everything. So we'll have our item ID. And we're going to name them first. And then we'll go back and set the type. So we'll have an item type. We'll have our item name, that way when we pull it up in a menu we'll be able to see what name it has. Same thing for this one which is an item image. We'll have a, we'll see how many we have in our current stack of that item as well as how many can, I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm struggling to talk. I brought the dogs in and they are gassing me up something fierce good night now we'll have our max stack for how many items can be stacked in that spot we'll have a crafting recipe for when we're putting stuff together we'll have its effectiveness which is basically like if you swing a, a sword how, how strong can it hit uh, let's see, a use animation. So we'll have animation set up. Depending on what tool you're using, we'll be able to change which animation it's using. Um, a sell value. A buy value. And then a stamina cost to swing it. Alright, so now we'll set these all up because we don't want just a list of booleans. That's useless. So this one is our item ID enum that we just made. 
Second one is our item type enumerator that we just made. The item name is a text because when we play it, display it on screen, we'll just use a text to describe it. The item image is a texture 2D object reference. Current and st current stack and max stack are both integers because those are just numbers. Now the recipe is also going to be our item ID, but we're going to click this little drop down right here and set it to be a map. A map lets you have two ver two variables on one. So we want our item ID so we know what item we'll need, and then this one will be an integer so we know how many of that item we'll need. And these work kind of like arrays also, so we'll be able to have more than just one item ID. So a recipe can have require three items that each have their own different value. The effectiveness will be a float and it will be an array because we'll add two to this and then we'll have a min and a max range effectiveness for each item. The use animation is an anim montage object reference sell and buy are both integers also because we'll just be using that you know strictly number stuff and then the stamina cost will be a float because our stamina will be a float and that will just make it easier now we can go over to the default values and we don't actually want to set too many but we will do let's go to the effectiveness and we'll just add two right there just so that when we go later on we don't have to keep adding we can just adjust the values and for the item image, we'll just set it to be a black background. Now if you don't if you don't have this, which it, you should, um, let's see. If you go under here, content, show engine content, uh, I think that's where it's popping up because it said engine on it. Let's take a look engine resources yeah so probably under that engine content if you can't find it just go to that little settings ba bam should be good to go so now we're going to set up the item base types for all of our different item types so I'm gonna right click and create a blueprint class of an actor and this will be the lead parent class so it's going to be the BP underscore base item and then everything else will be a child of this. So let's see, we got health, stamina. So we'll have, let's see, we'll create a child blueprint. BP underscore base health. I guess this could be just like a base consumable. But I'm going to do it separate ones. So in case we want to do it differently, then we can have our food in a, a different folder. So these will be our health items I forgot the S doesn't matter we'll just throw it in there then let's see what else we got we got stamina so basically it's the same process for all of them right click create child blueprint BP underscore base stamina now the reason I'm doing it this way is because they will all inherit certain functionality from the parent class so the item info, uh, a static mesh for its visual, its interface, all that kind of stuff can be in this parent class. But then each child blueprint can also have its own unique functionality. So that's what comes in handy doing it this way. Then we'll create a new folder. This will be our stamina items. I like. I personally like to keep the base item with all the item data so that I know it's the parent class and then the base of each one can go into its own folder so that it can be with its uh, children I suppose. <laughs> all right then we'll have a right click create child blueprint BP underscore base weapon and let's just go ahead and do these all and then we'll separate them out so child blueprint BP underscore base tool. Can I drag this off to another screen? Oh, I can't. That was the item ID. This will make it easier so I don't have to keep doing it. Alright, we got weapon, we got tool. 
Okay, child blueprint, BP underscore base seed. BP underscore base prop. BP underscore base reagent. Yeah. And then BP underscore base food. It may seem like it's more complicated when you can just make everything a list of this, but later on we'll be able to actually set a weapon reference in our character and then just use these and it'll, when we pull up the list it'll be specifically a list of these items. Or when we go on later on to do our cooking we can have just base food pop up and then be able to select from just those specific ones. It'll make it a lot easier later on. The more organizing and planning you do in the in the beginning is kind of more boring, but it pays in dividends later on so we got let's see we got health and stamina so we need weapon we'll just say weapons and ba bam new folder tools new folder seeds New folder, props, new folder, oh I hit folder, okay, uh, reagents, there you are, and then new folder, food. This way later on when we need to tweak certain things we'll be able to just jump straight into its folder and find all our recipes or we need to adjust our weapons, we can go over there. So let's save everything. And I'm gonna leave this one as just setting up the base work so that if you need to come back to it, then we'll be able to do that. And then the next one we'll start setting up, tra setting up some of these and then transferring data over to the player. Then we're gonna start working on getting our hotbar on screen and start using uh, our our abilities and stuff and weapons and items and all that stuff so I will see you all soon bye bye